September 11th, 2018, 7 o'clock. A little tidbit. Remember 17 years ago today, it was a tough day for us Americans. And uh, um, some of the kids in our school were born, some weren't, but I hope, I hope uh, everybody thought about 9-11 today and, uh, and all the great people we lost. And I'm gonna turn it over to Darius. All right, um, before we go into, we have to reorganize today, that's why it's being handed over to me. Um, I first want to introduce uh, George Lanitas, who is our interim principal, if you haven't met him already. Um, I, and I also want to um, introduce um, Brian Richards, who is our um, one of our two business managers from um, TMS. And I guess it'd probably be appropriate if you would just go around, just introduce who you are, what town you're from, so George and Brian, and I remember who you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Olivia Leone, and I'm from Jersey. Keith McFarland, son. Phil Cantor, Conway. Bill Smith, Waitley. Bob Hallow, Waitley. Brian Richards, DMS. Okay. Bob Decker, Deerfield. Mary Raymond, Deerfield. Cindy Womack, Conway. And Roberts, Frontier. Junior Pierce, Sunderland. Sunderland, Frontier. I don't even know what I'm always coming in hot. That's the one thing you're going to know. All right. Now I will bring in nominations for chair. Will Robert Hale for chair. Second. Nominations be closed. Second. All those in favor? Which one? First, we've got to close the nominations before we vote on the okay. nominations, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm going to go with that. So, to voting to close nominations, all those in favor? The okay, nominations are closed. And then at the first and second, I'm Robert Hollow being chair. All those in favor? Back to you. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> um, first, okay, first uh, we're looking for uh, nominations for vice chair. And vice chairs, just in case I'm not here, uh, sick, on vacation. <laughs> so I'm looking for a vice chair. He's retiring this year, so it might. I nominate Bill Smith. Second. 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 Nominations are closed. All in favor? <laughs> you can't bump us at the time. And all in favor of Bill Smith being vice chair? Thank you. So tonight, tonight, I am looking for somebody to do secretary. It's a paying position. You do about 12, we, we figured out probably about 12 meetings with our special meetings and stuff. It pays $600 for a secretary. And I'm looking for a secretary. Because I can't. I nominate Judy Pierce. I second that. I, I move that. Thank you. I second that. You guys are <laughs> stealthy. Excuse me, we're railroading you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I anticipated this. Did you bring her? Who's <laughs> that? Hold on. He's writing. She'll be typing in a second. <laughs> I'm 
nominations on a secretary. So, all in favor for Judy being secretary, raise your hand. Thank you. <laughs> oh, do you want to move? Do I have to move? Yeah, you can no, take tonight. Tonight. As long as you're here, you're just fine over there. Do you, um, <laughs> well, yeah, I, have to, I have to show my scribbles. Yeah. I know, too. Do you want to take over this? Um, I'll come up, but I'm just going to quietly type. Say that again? You're going to come visit us? I'm going to come visit you. Is the deed signed? Yeah. Executed? Yeah. But it hasn't closed. Correct. Well, I don't know. Not the secretary or former secretary's fault. No, no, but what I'm saying is <laughs> if the deed's still on, when he, the notary's, what's he got for date on it? Uh, it's already passed, come and gone. But well, I just want to make it's sure. It's by agreement of parties. I just want to make sure that it doesn't get held up yeah, because we not. don't have the right officer there. Yeah. Okay. That's my point. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sorry to tell you what to do. That's all right. Mr. Smith, are you willing to help us out with the budget subcommittee again? I don't see why not. Okay. And who else is on the budget subcommittee? Mayor Raymond? Is there anyone there? Hold on. No, that's Phil. Please. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Do we have to note vote that one? No. Okay. No negotiation teams team. Yeah. I'm on it. I'm on it. Or I was on it. You're gonna appoint somebody else, but I will do I it. On it too, actually. How many members are on it? Do we have it right there? It's blank. Okay. It would be a new team. Nobody was on it. We didn't have negotiation. We didn't have negotiation. Usually so, so I guess we're going to be doing we're going to be doing two this year. We're going to be doing the teachers and the instructional assistants, correct? So, do you we remember how many, I remember I was on it last time. I was on it. We on it. Thirty-eight teachers, the union and the instructional assistants are two different. Entities. Right. But we, but so it's actually going to be four this year, correct? Okay. So but if, not if you're looking at it for the so we're only talking about frontier. frontier, but just frontier there's going to be two. Right. Teachers and instructional. <clears throat> right. That's what we did before. So myself, Cindy, Phil, and who's from Deerfield? Oh, you're all missing something. Well, you if I'm, I'm from those. Conway, he's from Conway. Okay. So he shouldn't be on that, and he's on budget. He could be on it if he's going to be the elected official from Conway to be going on here. So, so you, you'll stay off of that. You can, if you want to be on it. Um, so who's from Deerfield? For negotiations, Bob or Mary? I'll do it if you want. Unless you want to. I haven't done it for a while. The last time I did it was 30 years ago. It's changed. It's a change here. Oh. Okay, so Cindy, Bob, Phil, and Bob? Bill. No, and yeah, Bob. No. Two we Bob's need one more. We need somebody from Sunderland. Keith doesn't want I already took the head today, so you're up. Lynn, <laughs> would you like to? Sure. Okay. Thank you. No, Phil's not on that. He's going to be on it as a select board member. Um, building Exploration Subcommittee. I think we're going to keep the same group, myself, 
Bob, exploration, right? Who else is on it there? Bill and Judy. And Judy. <laughs> Uh, collaborative representative. Are you going to stay with our collaborative? I'll do it for now, but I'm not getting very happy about not getting information from you. Okay. Are you getting your rides all right when you yeah. need rides at night? Actually, the eye doctor said I could drive if I'm not careful. <laughs> okay. Be careful. Just let us know when you're doing it. And the rest of us are being careful too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mars representative. I'm surprised. Who's surprised. been our Mars representative before? I am. Uh, would you like to do Mars again, sir? Yeah, I never get notice from meetings. Okay. No problem. And policy <laughs> review committee? That was, uh, that was me. Yeah. Mary. Bill, me. Bill, Bill Mary. Mary. Alan Lippin. Judy. No, Judy was not on that. Let's try that. Was Bill on that? I thought you were on that one. Yeah. Wait a minute. We have, like, Olivia sitting over here. <laughs> yeah, she's got nothing going on. She's, she's got to do something. something. Well, if Bill was on that, I'll do that. All right. That's right. Look at that. So Movie that? status right out the oh. window. Kind of dropped. Who's Bill. Replacing Bill. 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 That's all our committees. Thank you. No, we got what? No, that. What did I forget? You're right there. We just got to do the school committee convention conference. Yep. That's that's done. That's, that's later in the meeting. Clarification on the policy review subcommittee. Name the names again. There's Bills and Phils and Bobs and Bobs and <laughs> let's get it straight. There's no Bill. Bob Decker. Yep. Bob Hella. Thank you. Mary Raven. Yep. I think I was actually from the elementary. Huh? I think I was from Deerfield Elementary. So I think you just had two. Bill, you're not on it. Olivia's. I thought I was taking Bill Mayor pieces. See what I mean? Okay. What's it say on <laughs> that piece of paper of yours right there? Right? The My policy paper. review was only Bill on mine. On my printed paper where it just says The good news is there's not a lot this year. That but they do things too, come on. <laughs> Because I didn't want to. <laughs> they they, 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 they got a lot of work was done. I remember I was on it. I was on the. The one where we did a bunch with, with Lynn, I mean. What number I think? Yeah. So the form is wrong. Our memories are correct. Yeah, so Bob Decker, Bob Hallam, Mary, and Olivia. But I'm Deerfield Elementary. For the policy? Because we have Greg there from Yeah, Greg is there for We'll put Phil in there then. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. We only have two. We only have two. We got four. Me, Bob, Phil, and Olivia. There's four. Okay. What about you? What about you, Phil? Olivia oh, yeah. is still back out. Olivia. Oh, yeah, Olivia. Yeah, Olivia. Both of them. Olivia's from Deerfield. What time are we missing? Sunderland. That's Sunderland. Every elementary school has a rep. We have Bob Decker and Olivia, so Olivia probably needs to be on something. Bob is on enough. Oh, Damien. Where's Damien from? Damien's from Deer Deerfield. Deerfield. Oh, darn it. Always wanted to put people on who aren't here. Maybe <laughs> 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 secretary. So we still get somebody from Sunderland. Thank you. How many minutes did you get? <laughs> put Greg back on. Greg. Greg, the Sun Sunderland on the He doesn't have the power. <laughs> So who do we have? So we're going to drop Bob Decker, and we need to we need somebody from Sunderland. It's not like we're going to probably meet. There's not many meetings coming up. But there's not a lot of my either Lynn or, or Keith. If you're available to be on the policy committee, can it be a flexible? Like whoever's who's ever available. Put Lynn's name. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> Well, my schedule was a little late. Yes, sir. One other thing that Lynn and I represented the board on the sick leave bank. So I don't know if you want to handle that tonight or you don't. It might be probably a good one to have, to be honest with you. That we don't have to wait till we need two of us. Yep. So it was Bob. Sick bank? Yep. 
Yeah. I can do that. Thank you, Cindy. I'm assuming we only meet if there's an issue. Only right. when there's an issue. Okay. Okay. I think that's. Let me get back to my other paper here. I'll save this one for later. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think of the better. We need to. We need to approve the minutes from January, uh, June 12th, please. So move. Let's see that goes here. Hold on, let's see. Uh, June 12th. Absent, Lynn. Lynn was absent. No, the 12th I wasn't. It said you were. I got you absent. See? You have her there, too. <laughs> I was both here and not here, apparently. Okay. Did you leave in the All right, short here. <laughs> We'll leave, we'll leave you here then. Okay, I like being here. Okay. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. You have been ready to. <laughs> you said you were here. We were, yeah, we did not vote you <laughs> off the island. But she wasn't on the vote to go into. Yeah, she wasn't on the roll call to go into um, executive. Where was I then? Hold on. Let me go back to June 12th to find Did out. Did you make any was motions here? while you were not here? <laughs> I guess you're not going to be here, Lynn. Actually, our superintendent at the time is listed as both present and absent as well. They did this to me, too. <laughs> I was like standing that here. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> I guess probably I don't. accurate minutes, that's all. <laughs> Apparently, I will not be on I just want to let you know who signed the minutes. It wasn't me that signed the minutes, so you can't blame me. You know, and you and can't blame this person because she's not here anymore either. So, oh, no, so we're gonna Lynn, we're gonna have you absent, Lynn. All right, okay. I'm good for that. All in favor? Oh, on you know June? what? I wasn't here. Screenagers was going on downstairs, and I was on the panel. You're in the building. There we go. All in favor on June 12th? Raise you your hands. After all corrections. I thought we had a second. I did. That's a big old one. Yep. Any public you got comment tonight? To about two. Yeah, you got your oh, 26 on here. Just sorry. Sorry. Motion to approve June 26. Yes. Second. Wait a minute. Keith and Mary were not here. Can we can we approve special meeting minutes out of executive? Oh, special meeting minutes. Just a special. Yeah. Meeting. Never mind. I withdraw it. Oh yeah. Any questions? Keith and Mary can't vote. All in favor? Seven or two. Okay. Financial <coughs> statement next, please. So, everybody's got our pictures. So, the June 30th, 2018 financials are still in process. They're not done yet. So, I handed out. Uh, where we are here today through uh, 8.31, um, the budget. So I apologize for um, not getting that out in a manner. Uh, just some issues going back and forth with Patty leaving and us being there and stuff like that. So I it will be going out <coughs> in, in a future line with the uh, agenda notes and stuff like that. So. Uh, the warrants, uh, which you all signed already, thank you very much, for the end of last year, there was 2179641 and so far in 2009, it was uh, 2339529 Any questions? A question on the encumbrances for the legal costs, the ward legal costs. Right, ninety-seven hundred eighty-eight dollars and fifty cents. What are you looking at? Can you tell us what page, Bob? Third line down on your financial statement. The first Front. page. School, <coughs> school committee people. Yeah. I do not know, but I will find out. Yeah. One of the we're one going of, in to collect the bargain. We don't have any money. <laughs> One of the things that may help us out also in different meetings on ones that are shown like negatives, if we could have uh, 
little summary of just to keep keep track of those negatives. That's what Patty used to do, and I think it helped all of us when there was a negative that just showed, okay, this was because of this, so we can just keep track of them. If anybody has a question, we already have it on a piece of paper that that's why it was there, so they so it's not asked again and again. That way we just keep track of so, of those overages. So I think on the, in order to get an infinite visions with the budgets and everything else, so some accounts got overloaded and some didn't have it much so as requisitions go through um, hopefully that will be the principal's job to decide where uh, on some of that stuff uh, it should go from to so we can adjust the budgets and stuff like that so um, there wouldn't be quite as many you know negative and Bob we'll have a better handle on things probably next month there during the joint meeting you know give us a little time to we'll get caught up I know you're you're a stickler on things and, and it will be it will be emailed to us like it was in the past um, whether it's a week or with the, no, yeah, with, the uh, with the agenda with the, with the agenda back yeah. week before is the, is the game plan is that okay, Bob? yeah I just okay. thought yeah. it was kind of unusual yeah. that, that our first meeting we're already in an <laughs> encumbered up so I don't know if, if Russ got a if that included all the collective bargaining costs and everything else, you got right. it covered up front. I don't know. We'll have to because that's yeah, that's going to be some to cost. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, just looking at it. And it's just the extra for a real estate lawyer. Should have very much. That's what yeah. Yeah. Tell us the real estate lawyer costs more money than the proceeds from the sale. No, 1,500 for a real estate lawyer. I think is what. Yeah, I think that's, that's what it was. So, and that's what. And we're getting a thousand dollars. Thousand one. <laughs> We're not getting a one dollar. I'm going to put in the one dollar oh, okay. just to make you happy. Anyway, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess I went out of order. Any any public comment? Nothing Welcome exciting. Back. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, student advisory of council has not been met yet. I was told. So hopefully next meeting, joint meeting, or the one after, it will have somebody visiting us. Uh, uh, Frontier Regional Building Renovation Committee. Uh, you want to? So we were supposed to um, show up today and uh, give a uh, report on where we're at with that. And what happened at the last meeting, which was last Thursday, uh, we were supposed to finalize things and it wasn't finalized. Um, and basically what we're going to be proposing is a 10-year capital improvement plan. So it's kind of a, it's a big deal in the sense of the impact that it's going to have to our four communities um, over the next 10 years. And so rather than rush it, we felt that, that at that meeting that there was, some, there was just some loose pieces and we put the cart before the horse before and lost the faith of the communities um, and what the process we're doing. And it's very close to being where we're at. So um, we agreed that we need to have another meeting um, of the subcommittee to kind of finalize the report. Um, Joe Markarian, who um, is working with us, the financial municipal finance specialist, really has put together a wonderful support report that really outlines the entire plan. Um, but what I'm requesting is that we do, and I don't want to hear collective groan, but that we have a second meeting in October just to discuss that report. Because right now we have a joint meeting. As we know, the joint meetings is when we handle a lot of the stuff that's all district-wide, professional development, and a lot of the nuts and bolts, kind of the Lee's and Sarah show of um, what's going on in our buildings. It kind of is the bulk of, of that. Um, we're proposing, um, if, if Bob will take it from there, but possibly the following week, do a um, school committee meeting of Frontier. Also be inviting um, members of finance or select boards, whoever want to come. Um, we're also inviting members of the finance committee to our subcommittee meeting, which is now on the 20, our next one is on the 25th, just to start getting the word out there to get thoughts, criticisms, comments on this plan before we kind of um, unveil it to all of you. Um, and then at that point, if it's a subcommittee coming to you, it's gonna become your plan to move it forward for um, the spring voting season. So it's kind of a, there's a lot of components in the plan. It's trying to address all the capital needs from the track, which is the largest number on here, to 
this room to here, why the AC isn't working, um, and so on and so forth. It, it, it's looking at all the problems we have over the next 10 years and how to fund that. And so there's a, um, and what our process was going through it. So it was a, it's been a lot of work. So that's where we're at there. So I'm not going to go into detail of it, but we're looking to do a um, plan on that. So I don't it's, know if you want to. I've learned a lot about some figures and stuff. There's like, we were talking about three different proposals. We've basically narrowed it down to one of them, and we're just trying to fine tune the one of them. And and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of numbers. Uh, Skip came from Deerfield to our meeting, and he was a light and You know, he had a couple questions. You know, his main thing: how are we going to fund it? And that's the biggest thing about how are you going to fund it. And it's a it's a good question, and you know, it's we we will have it laid out. I mean, we spent. We spent, you know, every meeting is an hour and a half, and, and we, we try to, I mean, we, we could go all night long. I mean, we just, you know, it's not fair to everybody to go all night long and stuff like that, so it's like, I mean, what do you? The only thing that I would add to all that is I think that in that meeting, in, in the supplemental meeting, um, I think there was talk about extending the invitation to the town's capital improvement committees as well. Okay. Um, because they are capital. This is this is capital improvement planning, and um, you invite them into the conversation, and you ruffle less feathers, um, theoretically. So you you're inviting them to the subcommittee as well, or just the joint? It's just this. No. this well, we, no, we, we, no, no, they no, no, I mean, no. it's a, it's an yes, open right. meeting, Extra so yeah, like Skip yeah. must have heard about it and decided to come and stuff. So. I mean, anybody's, you know, they're welcome. Anybody's welcome on the 25th still to come and, and, and partake in a question or two or something. But there again, we're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to get this package done. We were hoping for tonight. I mean, yeah. I mean we, we, we tried hard to have it done tonight and, and we finally said, you know, why? It, it, it is just about there. So, you know, I know, I know, I think what I'm seeing with your concern is that it's going to be, before some other people, before it's going to school committee, I'm inferring that that's yeah. probably yeah. the question. Um, the thoughts of that, I'm speaking for the committee of that night, was that it's being talked about already, and if they wanted to come and give their thoughts to where it's at before we finish up, if there's any of the loose ends on some of the things that are loose ends. It's tra we're trying to be transparent yeah, with it. It's, 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 I understand what you're saying because it. I hear I understand what you're saying. Is that it can go both ways. It's you know the full committee hasn't had a chance to weigh in on it, um, but it, you know just some of the things that were brought up the other night. We kind of fine tune things based on what was said, um, and so then we said, oh, maybe we should invite them to the next co committee there. And, you know. And the other thing is that it's not it's not just us up there do, figuring this out. That the, the FERCOG the municipal finance specialist is really an impressive guy, and uh, he can. He's, he, he, you know, he's our shepherd through all this, and he's he's, he's going to be our he's going to be our main person when we if if we have to go to any town, we're trying to get the towns to come to us when we when we have this meeting and, and once we finalize it, we want them to come to us so we we don't have to go to four towns and explain ourselves to them. And and Joe is willing to go to go to whatever he needs to to uh, get our plan through. We hope that by spending additional time that we can build a stronger coalition of support. And, you know, it's a give and take on all the parties. But I think that when we send the notices out, they've already gone out for the 25th meeting, the rest of the board members should uh, get a copy of the notice so that they can go if they want to go so that, and get a reminder as to when it is if they want to attend. Because we're not trying to keep you in the dark. I think. It, what Bob just said, I think it may just came out wrong. We're, we are going to the four towns and selling it, and we will, with the approval of the school committee, be using Joe to go to the four town at four town at town meetings to explain it as well. Just he's very, um, very knowledgeable and very, um, you know, when someone comes in with a counterpoint, he's like, you know, he's very good at acknowledging it and also pointing out the grander picture or how numbers are. You know how numbers are not static, and how, you know these kind of things. It's just a very realistic thing. He brings that kind of um, impressive calmness to it. Um, 
you know, remember also in our communities we have four select board members, and so that was part of also they felt they wanted um, their share, greater, greater <laughs> transparency with their with their colleagues of in town government at their things at that stage. And so um, we'll see. I mean, the, the the plan that we have moving forward, I, like I said, is ninety five percent done. It's not going to be able to. It's you know, it's we could have prevented it tonight, um, but if there was a hole here and there, I'm afraid that that then the, analogy that then deflates what we're trying to get across um, so um, you know I don't, that's where we're at that's the so I'm reading you Mary and I don't know what I'm reading <laughs> <laughs> Sydney. so to elaborate on what Mary said it, it kind of feels like we can go on the 25th but we're not part of that committee so we become part of the public as a, a committee member here so then you have select board members who are part of that committee. So it kind of feels like we are out of the loop as a committee until October 9th or 11th, you said. I'm, I'm not sure what day you meant. Um, so even though you have my full support on it, it just feels funny that it's kind of like the back door is kind of coming to the front door. And so do you see what I mean? We're going to be public people at a subcommittee member in which we are committee members in the poll. So it just feels weird. So I don't know if going forward, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's helped us a lot by having a select board person from each of the four towns. To me, it, I think it's helped a lot because, I mean, they speak their mind. I mean, they're, they're saying, how, do, how can we sell this to the town? But perhaps we should have had a committee member in a committee meeting and invited them to that committee meeting to be part of the discussion and then have that full committee meeting. But instead of like having them in our subcommittee? Instead of having it, because they are a part of your subcommittee. So to have that subcommittee come to the committee and then be inclusive of the committee. I'm sorry, we have to do No, that's okay. I feel like it's transparent for them. You're trying to make it transparent. They've taken it back to their finance committees or whatever. But I don't think it's transparent for us. Like, right, I, so, I don't have any idea. Right, so I mean, to, to how the decision came up was so basically, you have the select board member that said, you know, I really would like the finance, someone from the finance committee right, to so look at this before it goes, it gets approved <coughs> by school committee to move forward with it because the plan that we come forward is going to, it's, it's pretty robust. And so while it probably will be tinkered at school committee, it's going to probably be either approved or shot down, but it's going to be, if it gets shot down, it's going to have to go back to the drawing board, but it's going to be approved. It's going to, which I imagine it's going to become close to approved. I don't want to project, but it, there's a lot of work with a lot of good ideas in it. And the, and the idea was that they kind of felt like, well, if we can get finance to be able to weigh on it before it becomes a done deal by a school committee, then we'll have the, They'll feel like they have their voice within that process, and that was um, within the the draft of it. And so, not the draft to tear it apart. In the way the meetings run, I'll be honest. It's you know you can make the point, and we move on with what we're what we're discussing. So that at least it's heard. And so I think that was the mentality of it. I see you with the other side no, as I well. I think that's great. I just feel like I'm still back at the station, and the train left a while ago. <laughs> I'm waiting with her. Yeah. So okay. if, if we're going to come to this big meeting. With all this work that has been done, and Bill and I know from doing the original project what that means. I mean, mm -hmm. I have a great sense of that, but um, I feel like, you know, what am I going to say at this big meeting if I had a question? You know, it's, it's hard to bring it up at that, at that point in time. Come on the 25th. Well, maybe we, well, could, we could. We yeah, could. But then she's published. Not I just, and I'm looking for suggestions from the committee. We can send out the draft. That was presented at the last yeah, meeting. Yeah, even a report of some kind. Um, I'm looking at. I was looking at you, Phil Cotto. Yeah. Well, I, I, know I, I, I know that there. I know that there was. I know that there was a few significant revisions that he wanted to make. That I would rather him make those revisions before we send that draft out. Okay, um, but those revisions will come out before the 25th. Right. And so I can ask him when he has those revisions. I can send it to the full committee. Remember, you can't comment on it, but you can review it, and then ask me questions directly, but not reply all. Okay, and that will not open by my open meeting viol violation, and um, and then also if it sparks an issue, you can attend the subcommittee if you have questions. Um, again, it's it's um, 
it, or you can ask questions to me directly and I can try to answer them over the phone and that kind of thing. So at least you're, you feel comfortable about what, what's being discussed. Um, also, first read will also, I think it will also be looking at the double benefit there. Um, will I have some source instead of being dropped on that night, be able to start to process and looking through and then when it's explained again that evening, um, you know, hope that it's a pre-read, it won't, it won't hurt. Does that sound? Yeah, and I don't, I'm not implying that, that your work isn't good. That's not what I mean. No, I'm just saying, I don't know what your work I is. Don't, I, don't, I have no, no. We're going I guess, faith here. Yeah. Well, Mary, I guess want you to read it before you have to vote on it. We're not like Congress. It just feels a little backwards. I guess it would be the same if you guys had your subcommittee and looking at the Frontier budget and you had select board people showing up at your public True. meeting yep. looking at your thing yep. and they know about it before we do and I... I but then the budget... No, it's not the same, Bob, because they're not part of the committee. And the budget they're not part of the budget committee. Of they would be part of the public there. We've got select persons in, in this situation that are part of the committee that we're not part of. In, so I think what you said was the best fix for so, is to send us the information that you can send us and we reply to you and not to all mm -hmm. and then that way we come in on I don't know if we've decided what day not totally in the black we're right looking at the October 9th <laughs> October 9th we haven't we haven't picked it we haven't picked the second yeah, all meeting in October was, yet you said the week after the fourth well let's just go ahead and I mean it might well, be yeah, next, next this is the second Tuesday that's the only reason I yeah. as long as it doesn't have Nothing on the phone. You gotta check with the big guy first. Is there anything happening on the ninth? It's the ninth, it's the second Tuesday, you said? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Tuesday night, so All right. I will have that together. Second. Can we do it at six? Yep, we can do it anytime. By thirty. Four o'clock. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. So six p.m. Right? right? Six p.m. on the ninth. Okay. And I will get that other thing out to you as soon as. Um, has Joe, we have has Joe sent anything back to you? To we're trading actually. You were wanting to talk by phone, so we're okay. trading messages. Sorry. Okay, unfinished business discussion update on the Blue School. All right, so where we are with the Blue School is obviously we have um, a sign purchase and sale, but it has not closed pending the. Um, agreement of what's being done with the files. Okay, so um, this is a, and I've kind of said this at the other school committee meetings, that it, this is a massive, um, the files are, I didn't realize what the problem, how big the problem was. And we have tons of files, like literally tons of files. Um, three three um, tons of files were shredded on Monday as part of our cleaning out process to join 10 tons that were already shredded. And we probably have a tractor trailer load truck of files because you remember you have to keep every there's some files you have to keep for life there's some files um, you keep for seven years and you rotate and there's some we're not really sure if it's seven years or life and we're trying to get judgment calls on them so we brought in an outside vendor who helped us um, take the first step of getting it kind of organized and cleaned up and i have to say ronda lutniger has put in so much time into organizing those files but as it applies to the property is right now, we have files in every room on the second floor. Um, they were broken up in categories that way as we're getting ready to either digitize them, figure out where we're gonna store them, that kind of thing. We also had a ton of files and junk in the basement. Um, it's just, it's one of those things where if you had space, we all have garages that look like that, some, maybe some of us don't, but my garage looks like that, you don't throw it out, if you have space, if you're not really sure, so you stack in the back thing, three years later you've forgotten about it and it just kind of, and we had the space there to do that and that's what kind of occurred over time. So um, each file has to go through, um, files are mixed within files of what has to be saved and what doesn't have to be saved. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of work that has to be done on that. So um, Patty had taken the initiative as the keeper of the records um, and 
contracted with the company to give a, a proposal. Um, I have a copy of that proposal. I am actually meeting with them on Thursday to go through that proposal because even reading through it, I really need someone to explain it because there's so many different moving parts of it and it's quite expensive. You know, you're talking between twenty and thirty thousand dollars, and that may be just for step one. So it's a, um, and then on top of that, we may still have to be able to find a space for the keeping of the records that can't be digitized. There's something, or you have to digitize, and then you have to microfiche. Remember that from those days because you can't digitize some files; you only have to microfiche them because digitizing you can alter. It goes on. Uh, it, there's just these different levels. Every day I'm finding a little bit more out, but. Um, there's a lot there, and so I had a conversation with the buyer. Um, he asked me if I could hurry up the basement clean out, and that's what we're doing this week. Um, you know, he would move forward in good faith, but he'd asked us to consolidate, not be using the whole second floor for solid file storage. And so, not being a part of the conversation before, I don't know what was agreed. And I talked to Phil on the phone this week, trying to get an idea of where kind of things were at with, um, you know, regarding some of the other. You know, we have all these files that now are out of file cabinets, and I have dozens and dozens of metal file cabinets. I mean, 30 four drawer metal file cabinets that we don't no longer need. So, how are we going to get rid of those? And can, you know, we salvage some money from them and those kind of things? So, those, all that is where I'm at right now. So, it's kind of a the aftermath of the, the self. So, the, the sale is being, being put on hold until that's kind of cleaned up. So, I have the lawyers talking, and then me and the buyer can talk. The lawyers can't talk to the can't talk to our lawyer can't talk to the buyer they can't talk to lawyer. so that's the official word is being held up into there meanwhile back at the ranch I, I am on um, I did have a, a nice conversation with the buyer and we seem to be on amicable terms about getting this cleaned up so um, and I asked him to give me this was I talked to him probably two weeks ago and I said can you give me two weeks to open up school before I dive into this problem and then diving into it obviously the shredding started this week and, you know, we were using a storage for after school program, was using a whole room for storage and they had to get all that out. So it was just, it was space that was being used. So, so that's where, that's where we're at. We tried to get Patty interested in contacting a storage company called Iron Mount mm -hmm. about taking our records and actually physically <coughs> taking them to their storage facility. And when we need the records, we make a request, they get us the records and what have you. Uh, they have a facility down in, I think it's North Pearl, uh, one of my other lifetime jobs. I used to have to go there and look at records, mm -hmm. and it worked very well. I mean, you gave them what you needed for files, and they bring them down, they put them in a row, and you come in and look what you wanted, and put it, put it away, and they would take it away. If you wanted to, they had a copy machine, you wanted to copy something, you could. And I don't know what they would charge us to take and store those things on an annual basis. And to uh, talk about uh, getting access to them, but Patty didn't really want to do that. And, and, so and I, right, and I understand why Patty was reluctant on doing that because right now the file system with the current files, I mean, you have to have an accurate system of knowing where you know box A6 is going to contain this year to this year. We don't have that exact of a system. We have over there is the 80s. You know what I mean? And so. And, it, and it's something that has to be, it's part of the proposal from, it's part of the proposal from the vendors to clean up and going through and, you know, digitizing certain things, that kind of thing. So maybe at the end of the cleanup, we're going to have to have a place where we're going to have to, to store. And that's what I'm looking at now. And I'll be honest with you, I'm taking two steps back. Patty was ahead of me on this, but now that I'm taking it over, um, I have to kind of see, that's why I'm meeting with the original vendor um, who gave us the first proposal. Um, to have him walk me through what he's talking about and looking at the different things and different things. If Iron Mountain or any of the other vendors out there to do with file storage um, is, you know, is an option. It'll be, it'll be something that we're going to look at. Well, but You know, I just think that we ought to look at it. Right. Yeah. And the problem is it's, right, I mean, I, under, I understand that it is an option. But we, we'd just like to say that we knew about that this document issue was triggered by the sale, but it, we would have had to deal with this. Darius would have worked somebody else in that position would have had to deal with this regardless that this was a known uh, issue that needed uh, I believe Marty was the first one to go yeah. there are so many of them and we just all sat here going yeah okay 
Yeah. And now you. Now we're up to three. You was, realize you don't realize. Was, I did. I drove over there. Eye opening, huh? I drove over there sometime in August, and I walked in, and I called Donna on the cell phone, and I started yelling at her. What the heck is going on over here? Because I had no idea. Because until you see it, you don't believe. Because I was like, oh, maybe we'll rent a. You know, worst case scenario, rent a, some kind of pod, a more expensive one that you know you can keep, you know, and you know for a couple thousand dollars we'll be able to solve this problem until we get no, <laughs> that's not going to do it. We're going to need to rent a, a, a larger space, the size of a classroom is probably the space wow. we need, and right now we don't. And then there's the talk where you can send the towns, each of the towns, their records. Um, the problem is when the request comes in, they come to our central office, and so then they'd have to drive out to the towns, and then we would have to ensure that all four towns are properly securing and doing all the records here. You're better off trying to keep them in one place where you have an idea of your cataloging and all the other stuff. So it's a, it's a I'll be reporting on it as it goes on, but that's so where we are. Maybe you should the, add so. extending a room to this plan of yours for ten years. You know, like I adding thought, another I room thought, on a little bump out. Records. Facility. Yeah. Right. Well, Bob was talking about Iron Mountain, which is 100 miles that way, Not but our fort, well, 50 yeah. miles, Portable and our towns are only so many miles. I mean, okay. comes know, comes right. push to shove. Every town, care. every town should fess up. Every and town has a up. storage problem. I mean, every town. They do, and, and Deerfield's working with one of the same vendors that we're looking at to consolidate their record because they're overflowing with the records. Right, because when it's, Conway went and surveyed every single department, they all came up number one storage. They needed storage, so, so you're not going to give much to the town. And the church, the town of Deerfield, took control of the congregation of the church last year. There you go. It's got well, I asked Darius this morning about mm -hmm. you know, the big thing we were talking about. Did say, are we doing it now? No. If we're still doing paper now, what are we doing? shame on us that if we're doing paper still because we got to find a spot for them. Right. I mean, we got to, you know. But you we, can't, we, so I know, I the, know. The, the problem, it, everything gets complicated very quickly because if you go to digitize something, you have to have a system in which you're dropping those digitized files in or else it just, talk about the quickest way to lose something, you don't even see it burn up. It just goes and disappears and then you're in deep trouble. And especially if you're missing files in the last seven years where we get lots of oh, requests yeah. on. So, as you digitize, I mean, everything, payroll and you know, infinite visions, all that stuff that we're using now, all that stuff is now digitized and backed up that way. But, um, you, know, you know, student records and that kind of thing, right now, you know, we're, we keep file cabinets full of them. Um, you know, it's, yeah, I think the new facility on Route 5 where Lighthouse Realty was, Grand Teams, mm -hmm. uh, across from the old Gables, I think they've got some heated storage units in there. And, no, it, there, it, it may be something we look at. It wasn't, that wasn't, that's not, again, I have to find out what can be digitized. This is where I, I'm still, I'm getting the information. I'll be coming back with it. But how much of it has to stay in paper form? Because there is quite a bit that does, um, from what I understand. But well, anyway, did you, you want to talk to us on the joint, all this? Uh, yeah, I think else? it's a joint problem. I can, I can try to be <laughs> out there. Yep. Right. Kudos to you for dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. We can't, can't another week. Yeah. All right, we're not going to vote so on anything. We're not going to gonna vote on anything to tonight job. for this yep. subcommittee. New business. Uh, we got a new uh, school committee schedule. So this doesn't affect um, Frontier very much in the start of meeting times, but you may have seen that was sent out to the elementaries. My schedule. Um, that we they combined days. For instance, Waitley, uh, thank you. Um, combined days to have multiple meetings in the same evening. Um, so, so there'll be less nights out. Um, and already we're adding more meetings to it, but that's the, that's the nature of the beast, and I understood that. So, for instance, today we had Waitley at 8 a.m. this morning, I had Deerfield at 5.30, and I had Frontier now. So Frontier will, had to move from 6 to 7. That's the biggest change time-wise. But the dates got kind of shifted around. So you got to look at the... the um, the actual date's not, it doesn't always fall the second Tuesday of the month. Um, although for Frontier, it looks like it does. Yeah. Except, Except for March. March. Um, also note that in budget season, it is the traditional five day, um, five meeting schedule for those months because budget meetings are more intense and um, can go longer and need more time and so forth. So we'll see how it works out, you know. Um, and as each of the elementary schools so are in. We need. No, no, no. It's six. It's six. I mean, there's seven. Oh, it's like six. a sprinkle. Yeah. That so is we, the one thing that's confusing on here is that 
When there are multiple meetings the same day, this meeting's at seven. When the meetings are alone, they're at six. So you have to look at the schedule. You gotta kind of go and program it to your phone. Um, so it is moving around, but it's trying to get maximize convenience with the inconvenience of not having a consistent date and time. So we need, a, we need a motion and uh, a vote. I'll, I'll move to approve the revised proposed schedule. Second. Any other questions? Just All in gonna, favor? Second. Okay, question. Keith? Are we going to run into a hard stop, basically, for some of these meetings? <laughs> Frontier won't, because Frontier is the last meeting of the night. But elementary. Elementary will. Um, hard stop with me. So the meeting can continue without the superintendent present and you, the chair is the only person that's being you know, so the meeting the the board. So, um, you know, the idea is hopefully we will get it through the majority of the things before that deadline. And Deerfield got done at 37 minutes tonight. <laughs> I'm, not one, I'm not extending meetings. Um, I'm just saying Deerfield got done at 37 minutes tonight. You know, uh, again, and I know that, and the idea also is that as you get into the thicker part of the budget year, we go back to that regular schedule. But, that's my only concern. Yeah. If it will cut down on nights for you, I am willing to try anything. Yeah. Well, it's just going to be filled in negotiation meetings. Right. So. right, right. But at least it won't be that but you'll negotiation get it all done. meetings. <laughs> you won't be able to, you won't have to go back and forth. Anybody else have any questions on that? Need a vote? All in favor? So moved. Thank you. So I do appreciate the attempt to at least to. You're going to you gonna do the school. You got to make sure you building. still eat, though. You got to make sure you still eat dinner. Take care of yourself. I did. All right. All right. Um, the building maintenance update. I'm doing this right, George? Or yes. do you have it? All right. Um, I don't want to take away any of your air time. <laughs> yeah. I told George, I said, school committee meetings is the longest you sit in a meeting and don't speak as a principal. All right. Um, the, second, uh, the second phase of work in the library media center was completed over the summer. So we did the cricket last fall. Remember the leak that was here over the summer? They took out those windows, replaced all the gaskets, and those tiles have been replaced as well. So it is beautiful over there, Bob. Oh, I've got one still. Uh, George, get out of here. All right, so um, that part was, was replaced um, over the summer. Um, we, we fixed the damaged light pole in the back parking lot that got knocked over when winter storm. Um, we had to replace a full floor in A110. It's the doorway when you first come into the building. Um, old Nikki Russell's room, if you have to have a name with it, but the moisture got in, popped up all the tiles. Um, even though it was air conditioned, it caused the, the tiles to pop. So they had to do a full, full um, uh, cleanup and floor replacement there. We installed another hydration station um, thanks to the environmental, middle school environmental group, which has a daughter who is a, is she a player in that? Me? No. Yes, right? I don't remember. Um, I thought she did. Anyway, um, to help raise <laughs> funds for that, um, hydration stage that was installed. Um, new mini split was put in a D106. Um, when we did some special education movement of um, rooms in the building for better programming. We had to add an AC um, to one of the rooms. Exhaust hood was put in the kiln room. That was the um, where we had the fire and the fire marshal put the exhaust fan in. So that's in into that conversation. Um, the lighting project in the gym to replace the fixtures in the gym with new LED um, should be completed over the next few weeks, and that should um, do significant energy savings um, and rebates um, for the installation of those lights. Um, we are working on that. I know people were talking about the security issue that we voted on in the last executive session. I suppose I could just give that update in the executive session. We have to vote the minutes. I can just tell you where we are on that. And then um, obviously all the rooms were deep cleaned and so on and so forth over the summer. So that's where we were for the summer maintenance. No problem, no major problems other than that floor. Yes, that was the only uh, you know, major problems there. So um, I, I talked to Darius this, uh, you know, must have been this morning, and I was trying to get an uh, update on the doors. That's what I was saying, talking about during. Oh, sorry. So we can do that in the executive right. section. I can give you the update but real sorry. quickly there. Sorry. Summer programs. I just had one question on this. Did we spend all the, do we have any money less than the maintenance account? After all the stuff we spent this summer? Of this current year's? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
So it was all encumbered funds we used? Okay. That was my question. Encumbered or voted funds, depending okay. on what we're talking about. Summer programs? Me again? <coughs> um, the summer pro you know, I didn't prepare, prepare a sheet for that. Um, the summer program, so again, we did uh, our, our Jumpstart program, as long as also um, several special ed programs in the school this summer. Um, I mean, the building, again, is used probably five to six weeks during the summer, four weeks solid, the entire month of July, this building is now. So the idea that the building sits dormant during the summer is just not a, it's just not a truth anymore. Um, and the amount of summer programs that happen over at Deerfield Elementary and Waitley Elementary, um, this need for summer services and also running summer camps that um, um, for kids at the same time are, are, are very popular so it's the same there was no new summer programs this year um, just the ones we've had in previous years as well. question or comment so, so we owe the maintenance crew a huge thanks because they must have had to shuffle around a lot to get things taken care of before we started school with yep. all these programs going on yes so I would like to extend thank you to them because they are a hard-working crew to begin with. This yeah. place always looks great, but to actually maneuver around people when you're trying to clean rooms, that, that's, <coughs> thank you very much. I, I think that's wonderful. George bought a lunch. Every day. Not every day. They eat a lot. They do, yeah. don't they? <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. Oh, no, no problem. Okay. Uh, you want to take the next one too? Yeah, I keep going here. Okay. So I'm going to give you the letter. So we were, um, this kind of dropped on our doorstep at the end of July, um, but we are now required due to, um, that's the letter, I'm not, I don't know if I had it through that, so I'll print out of it. Um, we are required to serve breakfast at Frontier Regional. Um, due to um, the combined total of 50 or more free and reduced priced application on the school site so you'll see that the letter that we got um, so basically they said we had to implement this program by October we 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 decided to implement it starting day one to try to boost um, interest right out of the gate so that this you know that breakfast is a norm instead of something that started up I was trying to go with the um, adolescent psych, psych on that um, however um, the sales are not high and that's the whole reason why we discontinued the breakfast program probably about three years ago um, it could have been two years ago those years are blending together but we did stop you know breakfast program because we weren't making enough money um, we did call the state and said if we don't have enough um, participation can we drop the breakfast program no we're mandated to do it so right now, um, the last page is looking at the cost, the labor cost for breakfast. I met with Mary um, regarding this, um, and she she was trying to sell the breakfast program, you know, hot breakfast options, that kind of thing. Because of the participation level, we're talking about maybe 10 or less is where we're at right now. Um, if you can't get those numbers up, she's going to reduce the offerings to more of a continental style. So there is options for students, but it's not going to be a egg sandwich, hot egg sandwich breakfast. It's going to be some, um, you know, cereal. Ce yeah, cereal, yogurt, fruit, yeah. you know, those kind of things that the prep time comes down on, um, that kind of thing. So, and that will reduce, and then she's going to look at reducing the labor costs. But you can see there, it's $55, basically $56 a day um, um, to run the breakfast program. And if you're selling, let's say 10 breakfasts for easy math, um, you know, and that's going to be, you know, 20 bucks. So it doesn't really work. So. And the state's not helping us with any money, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're, they're saying that the, the free and reduced lunch, so they're, you know, we really have to try to promote to get kids to, to do it. And, you know, and, and, and she's already thinking outside the box. So if you're not going to get the kids to get those, well, maybe we can get a grab and go. You know what I mean? We can grab a, a, a lunch and go, and, and it becomes more of a, um, a hit kind of a, I say use the word hip, um, but you know something that's you know acceptable thing to do, and you can like swing that. through, you can grab that, that kind of thing, um, yeah. you know that kind of thing. So, I, do you, you know, do you know if it's repeat clients, customers? You know, I didn't ask. Because if it's repeat customers, then it's working. Yeah. Right. Because if you are, you know, if you're servicing ten dollars a day and you've got kids that normally wouldn't eat and they're doing it every day, 
then it's just a yeah. time to build it up. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd be My guess is there is a core of seven that, because I think oh, I was looking at the numbers, it's spread as high as 15 one day and as low as five. It's I just got to catch on. So, and that's what we're hoping to do. But she's also saying we're not going to, you know, be running eggs out there, eggs and sausages out there every morning if it's not going to. Right, but that grab and go idea, because yeah. um, they have, um, our school does it. Yeah. And I'm not sure how successful it is. All I can tell you is when I go down there to get a banana or, or a parfait, or now they have banana split breakfasts, they call them, um, I have to wait in line every time. So if you have to wait in line, people are fine. And, and I will tell you, the finding out <coughs> if it was mandatory even after the low sales, we didn't find out till this week. And so we, she started saying, well, we're going to have to think of different ways, mm -hmm. you know, to really sell this. And I guess, you know, um, well, we don't like being mandatory to do anything. Right. You're exactly right. If, if we're feeding just a few kids, it's worth putting the program together um, rather than going hungry all day. So mm -hmm. that was that piece of news. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is it on the website, Darius? <coughs> Your breakfast? Yes. And there's signs all over the building. And yeah, there's signs all over the building. She's really promoting it. Yeah. yeah. And even when you go in for lunch, it has what was for breakfast and then what was for lunch. So they're seeing it. Every week is going through the line. Seeing it. George, you have the next one personnel yes. update? I do. All right. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, obviously, uh, we've, hi we've done some new hires over the summer. Um, we hired uh, three new IAs. Uh, Kirsten Matson, uh, Jody Nicholas, and Aaron Murphy. Uh, we've hired six new teachers: uh, Leah Wilkerson, C.W. Leach, uh, Christine Barbieri, Alicia Clemens is actually an LPN, uh, Tomas Black, and Joseph Bartlett. And the other new hire was myself. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's so that's where we are with personnel. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> MASC Mass Joint Conference and Official Delegate. You need to vote the delegate that's going so they have voting rights at the conference. And I have Bob Decker and Olivia Leone planning on going to the conference. One of them is your voting member. You want to be a voting member? I won't be there on Saturday. No, it's Friday. Friday. Friday's the day of Friday's the vote. Where the vote is. Oh. You want I nominate it? Olivia. Sure. <laughs> Second. Ooh, nominations be close. Okay. <laughs> All in favor for Olivia being our delegate? Voting delegate. Voting delegate. You could put me down as an yeah. alternate, but I didn't want the voting delegate. I'm not even sure what they vote, but. Oh, oh believe Bob, me. Bob doesn't give up things like that. Lately. Believe me. No. Uh, it's know. very boring. Because the okay. same person, <laughs> it's tough. It makes the same type of motion. Bring a ball. Yeah. All right, I was quick there. I was quick. We're moving along. <laughs> Personnel policies and procedures, job classifications. All right. So, um, I ran into this problem in the first couple of weeks and threw it on the school committee um, agenda. We have a. I know you don't like talking about names, but um, we have. A, if you look toward GB1, part of your files that you have there. So this is our personal policies and procedures. And we have a classification system that I, I'm asking the committee to look at to um, change. Um, basically, we have something called D, secretary to the guidance department. And why that person is not under, um, under the same wording as F, um, I don't know. but. The big difference is that person works all year round but gets less sick time than all the other secretaries in the building. <laughs> and so it is my um, recommendation to the committee is to, uh, where is my wording on this? Um, do I have a wording on this? Yeah, you want to delete classification D. I want to remove classification classification D and move um, the special education, I mean the um, guidance department secretary into the job classification of secretary. Um, and that will give this this person the three additional sick days, giving them the same, they get 10 and then five, five personal days, um, 10 sick days to be the same as all the other secretaries that work year round. 
it, it's, I don't know if in the, in the creation of this years and years ago, if that person didn't work the summers, which is my, maybe my guess, or had a limited schedule, but it's a... Uh, the salary range is the same for both. Correct. Okay. So we're not talking about changing salaries, we're talking about just adding um, D. So moved. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? And then next is our favorite policies. All right. Let's go through those in order here. Meal charge policy, um, it's an edit. You'll see on page two where we um, crossed out the um, punishing students who had delinquent accounts in other parts of the school for lunches. And that was never done, but it was in our policy. Um, so um, basically it was saying that we wouldn't let seniors graduate or you know those kind of things, or, or um, participate in certain graduation related activities or that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so we, uh, we do go after money during graduation season, but we never, we do payment plans and we try to figure out things with them. Um, and then, um, I guess they're adding with the, those families who have been failure to um, keep current accounts can be referred to the superintendent. And then I guess I go after that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get the big bucks? Right? That's right. So I, um, so I guess we could vote them as a block and just ask questions as we go through. Does that sound fair? Yep. Well, that's what you guys have done in the past. Yep. Um, the second one is student activities account. Um, this is something we talked about last year. It's just putting into policy about all those inactive accounts that we started going after that over three years of inactivity. Um, we started chasing down classes um, from 2007 that still have an account with us. We are waiting for them to do their, what now, 10 year anniversary, 10 uh, year uh, reunions and that kind of stuff. So we've sent letters out and we're starting to clean up those accounts, but now the policy will reflect that. We won't hold on to accounts after three years. We will try to close them. Three years or 10 years? It's three. Three, okay. We, we had one that was over 10 years old. Yeah. That's, that's why we have to clean that up. The next one is, questions on that one? Yeah. Um, next one is um, basically um, educational opportunities for children in foster care. This is something that we've been doing. This is obviously a state, this is a state um, suggested, mandated, or passed law. Um, basically, you're, what we're doing is if a student is moved into foster care um, and is placed outside the district, they can continue to come to school here. Um, to, um, and this does happen quite. It happens frequently enough that we that we know about this, and um, you know it just it also allows if you had a student who got brought into foster care into our district and can no longer go to their district because of distance, that we will immediately enroll them and not put them off and, and, and get them quickly into school. So giving those those um, those students who are obviously put in a disadvantage their rights. Um, and the majority of these we've been following all along anyway, so it's not it's not going to change our practice at all. Questions on that one? The last one is, I believe it's the last one, is the education opportunity for military children. This is a, a law that was set down. Basically, um, schools that are near, we don't have a lot of military children um, that are in active duty moving around. We do have a few. Um, but if you're near a base, you have kids coming and going. And if you had a student transfer in when they're junior year and they don't have enough credits to graduate because they were on in, stationed in Germany and that was just what they got, there's basically this law is saying that A, you're going to admit them as soon as quick as possible and that you will do your best to put them in placement with their current class so that, that you don't, because anytime, right now, if students transfer in from another state, they may not have enough credits to graduate based on our graduation standards. This is protecting those students that, uh, because they're part of a family that's serving the country, it's not their fault that they are um, being with them. So that gives them rights as well. So those are those. Are any questions on, on any of the policies before we vote on? I need a motion? I did. Is that Bill? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, reports. I said my piece beginning the meeting. Collaborative, collaborative hasn't met yet, right, Bob? Well, I mean, I think these are next week or the week after, but still trying to get an uh, update on the uh, year and results and uh, not getting 
any satisfaction. Okay. Stay on top of it, Bob. Hey, Pat, you're counting on you. <laughs> Don't let us down. Okay. George, you're next. Excellent. This uh, is your time. This is my time, right? So, all right. So I'm gonna. I did. I did uh, make a copy for everybody. Uh, I'll try to make this as brief as possible. So once again, introductions, new staff. Uh, I just want to say, introduce myself to the school committee officially uh, and to the public. Uh, my name is George Lanitas. I am the new interim principal here at Frontier Regional. Uh, I've been in education for 20 years. Um, I'd say over half of it in New York City. Um, so, um, uh, and I've been I've been in Western Mass as an administrator for the past five years, and I'm thrilled to be here. I hope you're a Pats fan. Uh, yeah, I, I grew up with not a Giants yes. fan. Not a Giants fan. Yeah, that's good. No, most of my friends were Jets fans in New York. Um, so uh, and so uh, and the other new staff. I've, I've already announced who the other new staff members are. Um, and when I've had a chance to check in with them, they're loving it. Uh, they're very grateful to be here as well. Uh, school opening went very well this year. Uh, we have a brand new entryway. Uh, that I want to thank the, the school council for making that happen. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see that. Yeah. It looks great. Uh, they painted it. They they put up uh, they put up photographs. They put up uh, there's new lettering up there. Uh, there's television. There's a television that broadcasts the schedule for the kids. It's 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 it looks really really good. So um, a big thanks to the to the uh, to the school council for that. Um, and uh, I also wanted to make note of the fact that we were just we just earned a silver medal and we were ranked 54th within Massachusetts by U.S. News and World Report. Um, so uh, then we, we got the plaque for that as well. So that's there. Um, we're continuing with our one-on-one -on -one Chromebook initiative. Uh, the, the rollout went very smoothly. Scott Paul and his team did a great job. Um, I've been getting into a lot of classrooms and I can say for, I've seen the Chromebooks are being used consistently uh, and the teachers are using them a lot. So that's wonderful to see. Um, uh, number four, uh, this October, uh, we're going to be administering the PSAT 8-9 to all students in grade 9 and the PSAT to all grade 10 students. Uh, all, grade, uh, all students in grades 9 and 10 will take, those exam will take these exams and there will be no cost for families. Uh, and they're currently scheduled for October 10th. Uh, so that's happening as well. Um, something else that we are just, we've rolled out and I'm hoping we can increase its capability because it does have a great capability as family ID mm -hmm. for signing up for, right now, uh, student people, families can enroll in athletics, but it has the capability if we're looking at uh, other things as well online, um, if we're looking at clubs, uh, third party uh, payments, things like that, uh, I believe it also has those capabilities. So that's a wonderful thing as well. Um, and one of the academic things we have coming up is um, one of our English teachers has secured a, a storyteller to come, Michaela Murphy, uh, visiting the high school on the 11th of October. Uh, her work has been featured in the New Yorker and she's on the Moth as well. I don't know if you're familiar. So there's a lot of great stuff happening. Uh, once again, I'm grateful to be here. I want to uh, also officially I want to thank Darius for for for, for bringing me on board. Right. So. There you go. So. <laughs> thank and you. Uh, and the upcoming dates, I the, there, those are there for you guys to, to take a look at as well. Just so you know. Thank you. So thank excellent you. first report. Thank, well, you. thank you very much. <laughs> Darius, yeah, I got a report too. <laughs> you just make more copies. Of yeah. All right. Um, mine will be even briefer. Um, we, you guys already heard that we had a smooth opening, and those are just the introductions, just so you have a, an awareness of administrators across the district that we also hired a principal over in Waitley, if you haven't heard, Christina Curtin, um, and Carol Netty, who you know put on, uh, has gone over to, as an assistant principal from here to, um, to Deerfield Elementary, and then our two business managers, Mark and Brian, there. Um, I will be doing an entry plan. Um, I, I have um, joined up, signed up to be part of the superintendent induction program. Um, I told them I'm only an interim in position, but they said, you know, you certainly can sign up. It's worthwhile to network and pick up the odds and ends of that. So I've also been, um, Kevin Courtney is my coach. So um, for those of you who know Kevin. Um, and so, you know, we talked about what kind of my entry plan will look like. It's gonna look a little different because I don't wanna be, um, I wanna plan forward. But I also understand that where my title is at this point, and I want to respect where that is as well. So um, I'm hoping to marriage the two and bring that to you in October. Um, we already talked about the conference. We are rolling out Infinite Vision software to the principals. Um, Brian kind of uh, set up, just made a line of that earlier tonight. Um, basically, what this is going to do is allows the principal to bring up exactly where the accounts are, or pretty darn close to what's been encumbered. 
um, and where the accounts stand, especially elementary schools as well. So all the principals have a better control of their budgets and so on and so forth. Um, the IT update, I had another paper going on. Um, just, I just wanted to show, they do work hard to um, the IT update of what they're doing in all the schools, um, and you can kind of read through to get an idea what they're doing at Frontier, what they're doing at the elementary schools, because um, there's a lot of work besides just purchasing computers and um, hooking up printers, as you will see with the amount of software and, and, and refurbishing it on and servers and whatnot. So I just want people to be able to see that because it's good to have an idea what they're doing. And then file storage, we already talked about as part of the building thing. Um, that was the longest part of my report, and we got that out of the way. Thank you. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> we're going to go into executive session pursuant to MGL 30AS 21A7, comply with or act under the authority of any, any general or special law or federal grant in a requirement. Approval executive session minutes dated June 12, 2018. So moved. Second. Roll call. Okay. Bob, yes. Bill? Yep. Bill? Yes. Damien's not here. Keith? Yes. Thank you, Steve. Judy? <laughs> Cindy? Yeah. yeah. Mary? Yeah. Bob? Okay. You went to the bathroom. Olivia? Yes. Did I forget anybody? He said Judy. Uh, I know. Okay. If Bob can vote, go into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to write that down. I'm not going to worry. <laughs> it's fine. Sure. So I need to. Huh? Bye. <laughs>